Warning, the following program may cause excitability and, in extreme cases, nausea. Avoid attentive listening if you are pregnant or nursing a baby while operating heavy machinery. In case of accidental overdose, consult your psychiatrist immediately. From DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com, I'm Darren Marlar, and this is your Daily Dose of Weird News. This episode's brought to you by the audiobook True Tales of Haunted Places by G. Michael Vasey, narrated by Darren Marlar. Hear a free sample and support Marlar House by downloading the audiobook for yourself at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. A New York doctor is helping patients lose weight by swallowing balloons. And if that doesn't work after the first treatment, he then has the patient swallow the balloons instead of swallowing them himself. Vice President Mike Pence's cat Oreo died on Saturday. Wow, Adam West and Oreo both gone. What a tragic weekend this was. The final day of school rolled around in Marlin, Texas, and that was the day that a sixth grade teacher was arrested and charged with possession of meth. Well, you know, everybody celebrates their last day of school in their own way. A group of gay Trump supporters have been kicked out of the Charlotte, North Carolina Gay Pride Parade. Apparently, you cannot be a Trump supporter and be homosexual at the same time. I'm not sure how that works politically or sexually, but well, there you go. In California, police were called to a grocery store after a man threatened employees. The man left with 12 bottles of whiskey, a digital thermometer, and two heads of lettuce. Police are looking for a man who is drunk, well-cooled, and in need of roughage. A Florida woman has been sentenced to 20 years in prison after trying to have her ex-husband sold as a sex slave. This, husbands, is why you never pass gas in bed. She's already thinking of ways to get even. A pair of Michael Jordan's basketball shoes have been sold at auction for the highest price on record for a pair of game-used sneakers. The shoes, said to have been worn in the gold medal game in the 1984 Olympics, sold Sunday morning for over $190,000. Man, I only hope there's also a can of Febreze included as part of that deal. New York business owner Nick Gamale says he's just happy to be alive after being struck by lightning while sitting at his office desk. This happened in Rochester while Nick was inside his auto repair shop as severe thunderstorms rolled across the area. He says he saw a bright flash of light from the office's light switch, heard a loud crack, and then the lights went out. Gamale says it was a few minutes before he realized his left hand was blistered from getting hit by the bolt that arced through the light switch. The garage's manager was standing outside the shop door when he saw the bolt strike the sidewalk in front of the building. He wasn't injured, and Gamale was treated at a hospital and released. So, how was your day, dear? Ah, same old, same old. Just sitting there at my desk, getting struck by lightning. The California mountains are still covered in eight feet of snow. But global warming is totally real. Color-changing tattoos are being developed to help monitor blood sugar and other health stats. If she gets a full-body color-changing tattoo, hey, maybe Rachel Dolezal can identify as an African-American again. China is preparing for a manned lunar landing in the near future. They'll be doing it without a rocket, and instead we'll just have everybody stand on their shoulders. Phil Collins tripped and fell in his hotel room, suffering a severe gash on his head close to his eye. He's okay, but he had to cancel two concerts and a scheduled recording session in his Stu Stu studio. A painting collecting dust in an Arizona attic could turn out to be a Jackson Pollock original worth $10 million. My parents found a dust-covered painting in their attic last week, too. But it was just my first kindergarten project, which apparently wasn't good enough to tape to the fridge! A high-pitched tone developed in Europe to drive teenagers out of public places is now being used by teenagers as a ringtone, <laughs> proving there is no sound so annoying that teenagers won't think it is music. There was a bar in Washington, D.C. that offered a free drink every time President Trump tweeted about former FBI Director James Comey during his testimony last Thursday. I do not know if there were any survivors. Former FBI Director Comey is in line for a $10 million book deal. Because, of course he is. Aretha Franklin's hometown of Detroit has named a street after her. 
The section of Madison Street between Brush and Witherell was named Aretha Franklin Way. On one hand, it's an honor to have a street named after you. On the other hand, it's Detroit. Be careful, music lovers! 45-year-old David Edward Brady has been arrested and accused of taking more than a thousand doses of fake drugs to the Bonnaroo Music Festival in Tennessee. He was arrested on a similar charge at the Wakarusa Music Festival in Arkansas in 2015, but the quantity of bogus drugs was much smaller at Wakarusa. According to an arrest warrant, police found about a thousand hits of fake LSD. 37 pills made to look as if they were Molly, a synthetic drug that alters mood and perception, 22 bags of fake mushrooms, 20 bags made to look like cocaine, and an incense stick made to look like black tar heroin. Coffee County Sheriff's investigator James Sherrill arrested Brady on a charge of possession of counterfeit controlled substances. Brady told police he was doing God's work by selling fake drugs. That's odd because I don't remember seeing the Book of Quaaludes last time I did my Bible study. A football player for the Buffalo Bills missed his flight, so he hired an Uber driver to drive him 500 miles to get to team practice. Man, I have heard of long drives in football, but wow! In a meeting last week with congressional leaders, President Trump suggested that his often-promised border wall with Mexico could be covered in solar panels, which is a great idea until day two when the wall and solar panels will be covered in anti-American graffiti. And you know that's going to be the case. Boston is paying ex-gang members to go to college. About 40 students who are also former gang members are members of Boston Uncornered, a three-year pilot program launched in May and run by the education nonprofit college-bound Dorchester. These students in the program earn a $400 weekly stipend by attending class every day, passing their high sets and moving on to college. Once in college, the stipend continues for as long as it takes for the former gang members to graduate with an associate's degree. So if you can't afford college, join a violent street gang and you might get a full-ride scholarship. The happiest place on Earth didn't exactly live up to its name for 17 guests over the weekend. Down in Disneyland Friday night, 11 adults and 6 juveniles were hit with fecal matter. Initial reports came in that someone might have thrown it at them, causing a hazmat team to respond. However, it was soon determined that the poor, unfortunate souls had actually been hit with goose poop from geese that were flying over the California theme park at the time. The guests were allowed to clean up in a private bathroom, were given new clothes, and returned to the amusement park, healthy and happy, per a tweet from the Anaheim PD. But then they got crapped on again after seeing the credit card bill from their Disney vacation. You might be surprised to know 30% of hiring managers think this is a big red flag when interviewing someone. What is it? Bad breath. <laughs> a red flag? More like blacklisted if I'm the one interviewing you. A man who was caught on video carrying a urinal out of a pub in England turned himself in. The man told police he had taken the urinal as a souvenir. Okay, well, you know, let this be a lesson to you, bar owners. Never ever run out of matchbooks. When Bethany Bowker woke up and went outside, she found her car and her driveway splattered with human poop. She lives near Salt Lake City International Airport and believes the disgusting mess was the result of a plane leaking its waste overhead. Video footage she posted shows her driveway covered in small brown fragments. Later, she turns the camera to her car, showing her doors, hood, wheels, and windshield covered in the waste. Blue ice is the name given to the frozen sewage that is leaked from a plane passing overhead. It consists of human waste and liquid disinfectant. The Federal Aviation Administration said it periodically receives reports of blue ice falling on a house. Sadly, they don't provide any advice on how to clean up blue ice. Well, that's easy. You tell the airline that you'll call your lawyer if they don't come and clean it up themselves. Do restaurant calorie counts work? The theory is that when we see calorie counts on menus, we'll choose healthier and less fat-filled items. Well, the reality is it just doesn't work that way. Calorie labeling on menus appears to have very little impact on what we choose to eat. You know, actually, I find the calorie counts helpful. I know that the higher the calories, the more delicious my meal is going to be. 
A study says a one-hour nap after lunch might improve a person's mental function. You know, I, I can attest to that. In fact, every day after lunch, I usually take a four-hour nap, you know, to, to improve my mind for the benefit of my employer. And uh, that's the story I'm sticking with. A group of janitors in China were promised new boots by their employer. Well, the boots turned out to be high heels. The shoes had been donated to the workers by local retailers, which the company blames for mixing up the shipment. The company says it will make things right and get them boots. In the meantime, the janitors will continue to work as normal, only now looking fabulous. The secret to falling asleep quickly and staying asleep all night could be as close as your refrigerator. People who eat a large variety of foods, which is an indicator of an overall healthy diet, have the healthiest sleep patterns, according to researchers from the Perelman School of Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. Sleep, like nutrition and physical activity, is a critical determinant of health and well-being. In a national analysis, the Penn team found that certain dietary nutrients appear to play an underlying role in short and long sleep duration. Now, I'm, I'm not sure I'd buy it, though. I mean, I eat a wide variety of things like Pringles, French fries, mashed potatoes, potato bread, potato soup. I mean, what else do you want? The study finds that liquid makes up about a quarter of the calories in the average American's diet. Is, is that good or bad? Well, the problem is most Americans only count the calories they get from solid foods, which means that we're not aware of how calories are sneaking into our diet. What? Wait, seriously? What are you, are you telling me that chocolate shakes should affect my daily calorie count? That's not fair. The zombie apocalypse? It won't take long. The study finds that the zombie hordes would take Earth's population down to just 273 survivors in 100 days. Gee, you know, somebody should make a TV series about that. Queen Elizabeth was once almost shot by a palace guard who mistook her for a late-night prowler. That's because the Queen is prone to late-night strolls on the palace grounds when she can't sleep. And during one such 3 a.m. walk, a guard thought she might be an intruder. Well, upon realizing who it was, the guard said, "'Bloody hell, Your Majesty! I nearly shot you!' Well, the Queen answered, "'That's quite all right. Next time I'll ring through beforehand so you don't have to shoot me.'" Yeah. Are, you, are you paying attention, America? Yeah, this is how we need to act if a law enforcement officer almost shoots us. Leave it to an English monarch to show class, even in a near-death situation. Join the Weird It Forward movement, where Marler House weirdos make a difference in the world a couple bucks at a time. No one can do everything, but everyone can do something. Our latest Weird It Forward campaign is for Richard. He was unjustly imprisoned for a crime he didn't commit and was behind bars for 17 years. While well, Kansas doesn't have a compensation plan for those unjustly imprisoned, so it's up to us to help this guy get his life back. Get the details by watching the video at WeirdItForward.com. Dennis Rodman flew to North Korea on Monday, hoping to meet with the big guy and talk peace. You know, I'm pretty sure this is the first time in the history of the world that the words, I wonder if Dennis Rodman can talk some sense in him, have been said out loud. Recently in Iowa, a man took several upskirt shots of a woman while she shopped. The Cedar Falls Police Department was, at last report, looking for the suspect, who was seen wearing a Boston Red Sox hat and shirt. In Iowa. Well, all right, it is a little off the subject, but that guy's outfit's kind of weird, too. Blair Robertson is a psychic. He was in Canada having lunch with his mentor and fellow psychic when Alexis crashed through the front window of the restaurant where they were eating and pinned Robertson against a wall. The woman driving was not injured. Admittedly, neither of the two psychics saw it coming. Need I say more? Research indicates that exercising on an empty stomach may be the secret to weight loss. <laughs> like that's going to happen. <laughs> Times two. A fugitive was found and arrested last week after posting to Snapchat pictures of herself and her child at a Pennsylvania amusement park. Allegheny County, Pennsylvania Sheriff William Mullen says Kimberly Dolan, 19, was wanted for attempted homicide and violation of bond conditions. Upon seeing Dolan's Snapchat update taken at Kennywood Amusement Park in West Mifflin, Pennsylvania, deputies contacted police who were already stationed in the park. 
no one was arrested without incident. Okay, a note to fugitives, stay off social media! No, on second thought, don't. You're actually making the police's job easier. President Trump announced in a recent email that his campaign will begin selling big league boxes, a hand-picked bundle of exclusive and vintage official Donald J. Trump merchandise delivered to your door every month as a recurring donor. So it's kind of like Loot Crate, only it's lame. Forbes has named Sean Diddy Combs as the highest-earning celebrity of 2016-2017 with $130 million. How in the world does a celebrity make that kind of money without starring in at least one movie where he's wearing a cape and tights, huh? A Russian man who caught his wife chatting online with other men decided to log her off for good by taking an axe to her laptop. I don't think he understands the definition of computer hacking. Speaking of Russia and computers, the latest evidence shows that the Russians were able to hack the election systems of 39 U.S. states. Now, they didn't actually manipulate the votes, though, as they already knew uh, enough chaos was going to take place no matter what, regardless of whether Trump or Hillary was elected. The sadomasochistic Swingers Club in the UK has been shut down over health and safety concerns. In this case, some of them may have wanted to be punished. 32 New York City mobsters have been indicted for trafficking stolen chocolate. Uh, you know, I've never really wanted to be a gangster, but suddenly now I'm kind of wanting a piece of that action. I want a slice. A video shoot on Detroit's west side ended after police arrived and fired shots, believing they were breaking up a real armed robbery. They responded to a 911 call of a reported robbery conducted out of a black Jeep with no doors. Well, when officers arrived, they saw a man getting out of a black Jeep with no doors and running up to an Aston Martin vehicle. Said Officer Dan Donikowski, a Detroit Police Department spokesperson, the subject appeared to be armed and appeared to be robbing the Aston Martin. When officers approached, a man turned toward the cops holding what appeared to be a weapon. An officer fired three shots, but none took effect, Donikowski said. Turns out the suspects were simply shooting a video but had not notified authorities and had not obtained proper permits or a license to do so. Okay, now aside from the lesson here about using fake guns on a film shoot and not getting permission, how does a cop fire three times at somebody like that and miss all three times? Was he using a prop gun too? Just because you exercise your right to free speech doesn't mean sponsors have to pay for it. Both Delta Airlines and Bank of America have pulled six-figure sponsorships from New York's public theater over its revamped production of Julius Caesar. In the reimagined play, Caesar is a President Trump lookalike who is ultimately stabbed to death by a group of women and minorities. A press conference was immediately convened so Kathy Griffin could deny having anything to do with it. Major League Baseball is reportedly open to start using a pitching clock in 2018. Yes! Anything to speed up the game somehow! On Sunday, in a non-binding election, Puerto Rico voted in favor of becoming the 51st state of the United States. Isn't that kind of like crowning yourself prom queen? I mean, despite the fact you were never on the ballot? Production of ABC's Bachelor in Paradise has been suspended amid allegations of misconduct. Uh, aren't all of the Bachelor and Bachelorette shows based on misconduct? A study says text messages can help lower a person's blood sugar levels. So apparently the president is doing it purely for health reasons. The University of Hawaii has offered a scholarship to a quarterback who is 11 years old and in fifth grade, Titan Lacedon, quarterback for the Hawaii All-Black Crusaders has announced via his Twitter account that he has received a scholarship offer to play for the Warriors. But he can't play in any night games. He does have a 10 p.m. curfew. Police in Florida are reminding folks to check any backyard pools they plan on diving into. They made that statement after pulling an eight-foot-long alligator from the bottom of a family's swimming pool in Venice, Florida. On the plus side, no one was hurt and the number of calls to 911 complaining about neighbor kids climbing people's fences to swim in their pools has decreased dramatically. A fisherman has discovered the world's first two-headed porpoise. Its name? Well, they called him Flipper, Flipper. 
seven young women from Spain have contacted police saying they were recorded by a drone recently while sunning themselves on the deck of a boat in Mallorca. If you're more than a mile out, though, I mean, isn't that considered international waters? A report says that 10 million Americans have serious mental illness. Yeah, I'm surprised the number's that low, too. In case you missed the scorching temperatures outside, summer is officially here. So, when Hannah Puey and her sister uh, went to Woodland Mall in Grand Rapids, Michigan on Saturday, she dressed for the 90-degree weather, meaning shorts and a Nemo tank top reading Just Keep Swimming with a picture from Pixar's Finding Nemo on the front. But partway through their shopping trip, mall security told her that she had to leave for wearing an inappropriate outfit. Allegedly, somebody complained. The Woodland Mall later apologized to Puey and said they're going to revise their clothing policy on their website so it is clearer what is and isn't acceptable. Yeah, I mean, give the girl a break, too. I mean, she already has to go through life with the last name of Puey. Dennis Rodman's trip to North Korea is being sponsored by something called Potcoin, a digital marijuana currency. Of course, this whole trip would have to be marijuana-related. After spending a decade as the most interesting man in the world for Das Ekis, actor Jonathan Goldsmith is now the spokesperson for Astral Tequila. Apparently being fired by Das Ekis drove him to the hard stuff. House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi believes President Trump will self-impeach and that Democrats should wait for the Russian investigation to play out before pushing to remove him from the Oval Office. Self-impeach? So what, he'll cut his own head off so Kathy Griffin won't have the chance to? Here is some neck-deep irony. In Kansas City, 71-year-old Lawrence John Ripple told a judge he robbed a bank because of depression and that he wanted to get away from his wife. Well, last September, Ripple went to the Bank of Labor, a block from police headquarters, and handed the teller a note saying he had a gun and demanded money. Well, after he was given the money, he sat down and waited for police. A federal judge gave him just what he didn't want – six months of home confinement with his wife and 50 hours of community service. Court records indicate Ripple wrote the robbery note in front of his wife and told her that he would rather be in jail than at home. Oops. <laughs> Sounds like he got the perfect punishment, though. Khloe Kardashian says her boyfriend Tristan Thompson wants to have five or six kids with her. And thank goodness, because I'm sure we were all concerned that the Kardashian family line might come to an end. That Oliver Stone interview series with Vladimir Putin is being criticized as too much of a love letter to the Russian leader, especially the part where the two of them recreate their favorite scenes from La La Land. Falling for a phishing scam is pretty dumb, but it is epic when you are the CEO of a major bank. Meet Goldman Sachs CEO Lloyd Blankfein and Citigroup's CEO Michael Corbett. The unsuspecting chief executives, along with Citigroup consumer banking chief Stephen Byrd, responded to emails sent by a prankster posing as bank executives over the weekend, according to both Goldman and Citigroup, though none revealed any sensitive information. In fact, it seems the goal of the scheme was simply to embarrass the bankers rather than steal information. In that case, mission accomplished. McDonald's says it'll be hiring 250,000 workers this summer, some to wait on tables. McDonald's waiters and waitresses. Unless they're stopping by to see if I would like a free refill on my french fries, I, I don't see the need here. But what, and do they expect to be tipped? I mean, what if you're ordering off the dollar menu? That's like a 20-cent tip. That's not worth bussing a table for. Stephen King says that President Trump has blocked him on Twitter. I don't blame him. You don't need a horror writer stalking you online. Washington, D.C. is horrifying enough on its own. Caitlyn Jenner says she would really like to play a round of golf with Donald Trump. Huh? D does uh, Caitlyn use women's clubs? Is she barred from entering the men-only comfy lounge at the golf club? I'm, I'm just wondering. As artificial intelligence continues to develop, we're going to see machines do more and more things humans can do like fly jetliners and beat Miss Pac-Man. Yep, Microsoft's AI computer recently beat the game and scored a million points. 
It is good to know artificial intelligence is being used for really important stuff. Never miss a single episode of The Daily Dose of Weird News. Download the free Marlar House mobile app. In the app, you can find links to my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Watch other Marlar House YouTube videos. Sign up for the Marlar Sheet newsletter to automatically be registered for giveaways. Purchase Daily Dose of Weird News t-shirts or mugs. Download audiobooks I've narrated. See my latest blog posts and more. The Marlar House mobile app is free for iOS and Android users. Download it now by clicking the Mobile App tab at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com or search for Marlar House in your phone app store. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe if you want to see more. And click that little bell icon next to the subscribe button to be notified when I post new videos. And if you're already an official weirdo, please share this video on your own social media. Find even more weird news that I didn't have time for on the Facebook page at DailyDoseOfWeirdNews.com. I'm Darren Marlar, and I'll see you next time, weirdos!